Are you a victim of criminal activity in the US? Do you have any helpful information about any unlawful activities in the US? And has any criminal activity caused you considerable mental or physical abuse? Did you know that such cases make you eligible for a new visa in the US, also known as the victim visa? Hi everyone, I'm Priya from It's OKR and welcome back to our channel. And if you are new today, It's OKR is a content platform for South Asian immigrants and we aim to educate, entertain and empower them. In this video, I am going to tell you everything you need to know about the EU visa including its types, requirements, duration, application, costs and more. I am sure you must have seen a lot of reels and TikToks about how you can get a green card in the US if you are a victim or a witness to a crime. Well, that's only partially true and we will discuss that today. So, what is a EU visa? It's a non-immigrant visa for victims of certain crimes who have suffered high level mental or physical abuse. The applicants must be ready to support law enforcement in investigating and resolving criminal activity. This visa was first launched by the Congress in 2000 to support the victims of Trafficking and Violence Protection Act. Its twofold benefits directly help the victims and the US law enforcement agencies. The victims receive protection and legal status to live and work in the US while law enforcement agencies can strengthen their ability to investigate and prosecute cases of domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking and other crimes. While the annual cap on new visas is 10,000 yearly, there is no cap on the family members you can take along. In fact, 43% of the U visa holders filed a petition of taking their family along. I'll now explain the different types of U visa that are available. Primarily split into two categories. First one is for the principal or main victim and it's called the U1 visa. This is specifically allocated to people who are direct victims of qualifying criminal activities like murder, extortion, blackmail, torture, justice obstruction, forced labor, forgery and many more. You can apply if you'll readily help law enforcement officers in bringing the criminal activity to the doors of justice. The second type of the U visa is a derivative visa for family members. This ensures that the victims aren't forced to separate from their loved ones. Here are some types. U2 visa for spouses of U1 visa. U3 visa for under 21 year old children of U1 visa holders. U4 visa for parents of U1 visa holders provided the applicant is under 21. U5 visa for unmarried siblings who are under 18 years old. I believe these derivative visas are options are sufficient for support and stability of victims during the need of these difficult times. Though I've already told you the basic U visa requirements, here are some criteria you must fulfill. You must have been a victim of a qualifying criminal activity such as abduction, blackmail, domestic violence, extortion, false imprisonment or several others. You may have suffered a great extent of physical or mental abuse due to the crime. You should have been aware of hidden details about the criminal activity. The crime occurred in the US or violated US laws. You were helpful, are helpful and may be helpful to the law enforcement in resolving these crimes. Feel free to visit the USCIS website for additional details to support the US government offers to crime victims. If you do get approval, the duration of U visa is 4 years. You can also request an extension from the USCIS by filing form I-539, an application to extend change non-immigrant status. What's best is that you can apply for a green card within 3 years of holding a U visa. Now I'll get into the meat of this topic, the U visa application process. Step 0. Please work with an immigration lawyer who specializes in these cases. I cannot stress on the importance of working with a lawyer. Do not. And I mean, do not try to save money on the lawyer. Hire the best you can afford. Step 1. Obtain Form I-918 from the USCIS website to file a petition for the U non-immigrant status. This form is free. Submit this form and save your confirmation receipt in your documentation file. If your request for certification from law enforcement agencies is granted, you will be informed whether you should sign Form I-918, this validates that you were, are or will be helpful in investigating criminal cases. You'll also receive approval for your I-918 petition via Form I-797 Notice of Action sent to you. Note that the Supplement B will be filed by a law enforcement official who can certify that you were a victim. Step 2. You must prepare a personal statement describing details of the criminal activity you were a victim of. I highly recommend you get specific in explaining the harm you suffered, its physical or mental effects, how you can help US law enforcement enforcement agencies and any supporting evidence. Your lawyer can help with this too. Step 3. The more documents you provide about the crime and its effects on you, the higher the chances of a U1 visa approval. From police reports to medical records and court documents to affidavit form, witnesses or even photographs providing the damage, the USCIS thoroughly checks these documents to assess your suitability for the U visa. Step 4. Double check and submit your application to the USCIS for processing. You may also need an immigration waiver form I-192 for certain inadmissibility 
the grounds or form I-765 and form I-765W for employment authorization. Now, all you can do is wait, sometimes even for several years, whether you meet the criteria or not. If the limit of 10,000 new visas per year is met, you will be put on a waiting list. Here is a roundup of the required documents for the U visa. These are required to be submitted to the USCIS and Law Enforcement Department. Form I-918 is a petition for you non-immigrant status, a comprehensive personal statement mentioning the crimes you witnessed and how they affected you, immigration waiver if you have any reason of inadmissibility to enter the country, Form I-192 as an application for advanced permission to enter as a non-immigrant, you will need another letter stating why you need the waiver, Form I-765 and Form I-765W as an application for employment authorization, your passport, two passport size photos and a birth certificate. Next, you will be relieved to know that there are no U visa costs. The I-918, I-192 and I-765 forms are free of cost. In case you are filing a petition for a family member as well, there is a $230 fee for filing form I-929. However, this too is acceptable if you file the form 912 as a request to waive the fee. Although, I'd like to inform you that the cost to hire an immigration attorney would range anywhere between $1,600 to $3,000. Moving on, let me explain the benefits of a U visa. You can legally apply to part-time and full-time jobs for four years. Since you become a legal non-immigrant for four years after being issued a U visa, you can open a bank account, opt for academic courses, and even get a driver's license. You can start your transition to a lawful permanent residence or a green card three years into your U visa, provided you continue to cooperate with the law enforcement. You get generous waivers that can allow many immigration violations to go unpunished. These include specific crimes, deportations, and unlawful presence. You can bring your family members and they will get the same privileges as the principal applicant. And I'd hate to break it to you, but giving complete information is my job. Like all visas, even the U visa has a ton of limitations. The US has reached its annual capacity of 10,000 U visas every year since 2011. 2022 itself showed a backlog of more than 170,000 remaining petitions. The U visas these days has an approximate wait of 6 to 20 years. While waiting for a U visa, applicants have no legal status. But in 2021, USCIS made a decision to start granting bona fide determination to those waiting for U visas because of this backlog. This allowed them to get work permits and work in the US while they wait for their U visa. This also protects them from deportation. The criteria for certification aren't the most clear. What I mean by that is that what qualifies as helpful to law enforcement agencies can vary from case to case and agency to agency. In case of a denied visa, you are at risk of being deported or detained. Your options here include appealing the decision to a higher supervisory part of the USCIS or contacting an immigration attorney. Nonetheless, the U visa is always a great option if you are grieving because of criminal activity performed by lawbreakers. And that's a wrap, you guys. The guide has all the necessary details about the U visa. Do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you found this video helpful. If there are other video topics that you want us to create, please put that in comments. And if things aren't going your way, remember it's okay, because they will eventually turn around. And that's Priya signing off for today. Have a wonderful day.